Hey guys, this is Nick with Phone Arena, and if you're looking for a new Android phone that is both big and powerful, the LG V20 may be your best option. Or maybe it is not, and I'm about to tell you why. You see, last year we had the LG V10. That was a great phone for enthusiasts, as it came with a wide range of advanced features. A secondary display, high-end audio hardware, full manual camera controls, all that kind of stuff. And the LG V20 sticks to the same formula. It brings a faster processor, an improved second screen, a dual main camera, a better sound chip, and no less importantly, there is Android 7.0 pre-installed on this phone. Overall, the V20 is a great device, but it still isn't a phone for everyone. Let's take a closer look and see why. First of all, you should know that the LG V20 is a seriously large smartphone. It stands in the same size category with the Nexus 6P, the LG V10 and the biggest iPhones, so it is not exactly super easy to operate. It is not the most beautiful phone either, but then again, that is a personal opinion. The V20 is not water-resistant, but it is built of extra durable materials, so it should be able to withstand more serious drops than the average phone. I've been using this phone for three weeks and it still looks like new. I suppose LG skipped the water resistance because it wanted to give its phone a removable battery, a feature that you don't see on high-end phones anymore. And the battery cell is actually super easy to replace. You just press a small button and the cover pops up. Here you will also find the slot for the SIM card. Right on top of it is a micro SD card slot for storage expansion, which you might not really need, as the V20 has a generous 64GB built in. On the back of the V20 you will find its power key. Its location may seem unusual at first, but it is something that you get used to over time. And you can still use a double tap to wake the screen if you want to. The button doubles as a fingerprint scanner and it is actually pretty fast and accurate. However, it could use some improvement. Sometimes it just fails to produce a reading if I put my finger on it while taking the phone out of my pocket. It is not a big deal, but some people might find it annoying. The main display on the LG V20 is large and detailed, and that's the best thing about it. You have plenty of space to watch videos, to browse web pages, to play games, and the content looks sharp and detailed. Also, the screen gets bright enough to be usable on a sunny day. On the downside, its color reproduction could be more accurate. Whites are bluish and darker shades of grey are brighter than they should be. Still, I suppose that most people will not be too bothered by any of that. I should also mention that the V20 has a built-in comfort view mode. This is a built-in light filter that puts less strain on your eyes if you have the habit of using the phone at night. As for the second display on the V20, it looks like a gimmick at first, but you will start appreciating it once you spend some time to configure it to your needs. Think of it as a widget that is available no matter what you're doing with your phone. Yes, the V10 had a second screen as well, but on the V20 it is brighter and with larger fonts. What is it used for? Well, this is how you skip a song on Spotify. And you can do that even if the phone is in standby. You may also have five of your favorite apps here and launch them at any time. This next screen is like an app switcher, listing your five most recent apps. You tap on one to go back to it. And there is even more, you can list favorite contacts here, have toggle buttons for a bunch of settings, or even write your name or a short message. And when the phone is in standby, the screen acts like a ticker for your notifications. But the second screen has a few drawbacks. One is that it is hard to reach up there, so I always have to use my other hand. Another is that when a notification arrives, it is gone in a couple of seconds, before I even get to read it. Also, if you have the screen lit at all times, it will have a small impact on battery life. The secondary screen on the V20 is highly customizable and so is the whole user experience with this device. For example, while there is no application drawer, you have the option to bring it back. If you don't like the appearance of the home screen, you can apply a different theme, another scrolling animation or change the size of the icons. You can change the position of the on-screen navigation buttons, you can make the on-screen keyboard bigger or smaller, and the list goes on. You do not have to do any of that, but if you want to get the best experience, there's a ton of adjustments to experiment with. Customization aside, the V20 runs on Android 7.0, so many of the platform's new features can be found here. For instance, you can double tap on the Recent Applications button to go back to the previous apps you are in. This is a very useful shortcut. 
You can reply to an instant message straight from the notification. Also, you have the so-called silent notifications now. If you do not want the notifications from a specific app to bother you, just swipe it across and enable silent notifications. No less importantly, there is the option to run two applications side by side, which seems like a cool idea, but its execution isn't great. First of all, it doesn't work for all apps. Apps that do not work in split-screen mode can be buggy and if you need to use a keyboard with one of the apps, the other might become unusable. On the hardware side of things, we have the Snapdragon 820 system on chip, along with 4GB of RAM. Unsurprisingly, the V20 performs really, really well in real life. Apps launch quickly, switching between them is nearly instant and the whole user interface is very responsive. Games also run great, although I did notice frame rate drops with some of the more demanding titles. But overall, this is a very powerful handset, both on paper and in real-world use. On the back of the LG V20 we have not one, but two cameras. One is a regular 16MP camera, while the other shoots 8MP wide-angle photos. Most of the time you'll be using the 16MP camera simply because it takes better quality photos. Meanwhile, the purpose of the secondary camera is to be used when your subject just cannot fit in the frame. The extremely wide angle lets you shoot massive group shots or images of large monuments, even from a close distance. However, this camera has its downsides. One is the obvious distortion near the edges, the other is that it cannot shoot as well as the main camera in low light, although images are still more than usable. About the main camera, it is one of the best you will find on a smartphone nowadays and you don't really have to be an expert to use it. The automatic mode is simple enough for most users. And if you want to make the most of this camera, there are full manual controls, both when shooting photos and video. If you are an experienced photographer, you have the freedom to match the camera settings to the situation. And if you aren't, well, here's your opportunity to learn a thing or two about how cameras work. Images shot with the 16MP camera look great almost every time. The V20 produces very detailed and natural photos without adding excessive amounts of contrast or saturation. This image, for example, was taken in the late afternoon and the warm light of the setting sun has been captured very accurately. And here is a photo that I took indoors where the car's red paint is represented very faithfully with just the right amount of saturation. Even low-light photos like this one have plenty of detail despite the higher sensitivity set by the camera. And here is how the wide-angle camera performs. As you can see, its field of view is much, much wider compared to that of the regular camera. This lets you fit a lot more into the frame from the same distance. And image quality is actually pretty good. Although there is no autofocus on this camera, objects appear sharp and detailed. Videos recorded with the LG V20 also look fine, although results may vary depending on how the camera is configured. By default, it shoots 1080p videos and you can easily switch between the regular and the wide-angle camera if you want to. Overall, videos are smooth and detailed and the sound in them is very clear. What's more, there is advanced image stabilizing going on, which makes the video even smoother, although you can still notice shakiness if you're walking while recording. Naturally, 4K video is more detailed, but you should know that the image stabilizing in this video mode isn't as great, so you will be noticing more of that jello effect while moving the camera. The wide-angle camera shoots 4K as well, but image quality isn't so great due to the camera's technical limitations. I must also mention the selfie camera. If you're wondering what video looks like if taken with the front-facing camera, here is your example. I'm using the regular camera mode right now. If I tap a button on the screen, I can switch to wide-angle mode to fit more people into the frame or more of my surroundings. As I said earlier, the LG V20 captures sound in videos really well and that's no surprise. It has three advanced microphones that allow it to record even louder sounds without any of that unwanted crackling distortion. The phone comes with a powerful sound recording app that gives you control over the recording settings and you even have the option to record in a lossless audio format, which could be useful if you plan to edit the sound afterwards. And if you are curious about the sound quality, the sound from the past 30 seconds of this video was captured on a V20. Another exciting feature about the V20 is the so-called Quad DAC. 
A DAC's job is to convert digital signals to the analog audio that gets sent to your earphones. And the sound chip inside this phone has four DAC modules built in. This results in reduced noise and lower distortion levels, and as you would expect, the V20 sounds pretty great through a pair of quality earphones. But the thing is that most high-end smartphones already sound really good and no worse than the V20. The real advantage of the V20 over its competitors is that it is powerful enough to drive large, high-impedance headphones. Small, regular earbuds sound just as they would with another phone. But if you have a pair of expensive, high-quality earphones, the V20 could be able to drive them better than most other phones of this class. Now let's talk battery life. Inside the V20 you will find a 3200 mAh battery, which I had higher hopes for. Based on my experience, it can last through a day of moderate usage, but on days when I played a lot of games or used the camera a lot, the battery was dead by early evening. Personally, I found myself charging the phone almost every night. The good thing is that you can easily replace the battery if you choose to buy a spare one. They cost around $40 a piece. I must also say that standby power use is very low on this phone. It loses as little as 5-6% to overnight if I forget to charge it. And the stock charger is really, really fast. If I give the V20 a quick 30-minute charge in the afternoon, that would be enough to give it a 50% battery boost. At first, using the LG V20 can be very exciting. It is a powerful phone with great capabilities and tons of features to play with. But as I said in the beginning, this is not a phone for everyone. And I'm not saying that just because it is larger than most other smartphones on the market. You see, an average user would feel overwhelmed by all the modes, settings and features the V20 drops on the table. That's why I wouldn't recommend it to people who need a phone that simply works. On the other hand, this is the ideal device for smartphone enthusiasts, for audiophiles and above all, for content creators. They're the kind of people who would truly appreciate the V20's standout features, such as its powerful cameras and sound recording capabilities. Thank you for watching this review of the LG V20. You can check out our website, phonearena.com, for all the latest smartphone news and subscribe to our YouTube channel to never miss a video.